Hey, how's it going? Last week I gave Paris a shot, and while it didn't have the hottest time by the end of it, I discovered one thing. Spore is the most broken move in Generation 1 and can make even a very weak Pokemon into a powerhouse. A 100% accurate sleep inducing move is just kind of nutty, combined with how sleep was a little extra overpowered in Generation 1 in the first place, but combine that with Swords Dance and some decent attack, and then you just end up seeing moments where Paris was just unbeatable. It was very fun and interesting. And this week, I just can't help myself, and I'm gonna go right back at it again with the only other Pokemon that can learn Spore, and that's its evolution, Parasect. Parasect, to me, has always been a scary Pokemon ever since I was little. It's essentially a fungal parasite, get it guys, Paris Parasite, that has taken over the Paris, and its dead zombie eyes are something that I've always found terrifying, especially after I found out that this is actually a real thing in nature, with ants and snails and stuff like that. But with that said, Parasect obviously still has all all the problems that its pre-evolved version has, but it has more stats, it has better starting moves, and the only trade-off for that is the drawback of learning Spore slightly later. Since this is a how fast style run, speed is the name of the game, and honestly, I'm initially not that confident that it can compete with the game's elite, but I'm willing to give it a shot because someone has to do it. If I don't do a Generation 1 Parasect run, then who's gonna do it guys, tell me. I'm gonna keep this short, but before we jump in, I do solo runs often, and if that is of interest to you, consider subscribing. That along with likes and comments are really what helps the channel grow. So if you're someone who just never interacts, just do me a favor, scroll down and just quickly type in Zombino to help bust through that dreaded algorithm and get this video suggested to other like-minded individuals. With that said, grab yourself a soda pop, sit back, relax, and let's see how far our Lord and Savior Spore can carry us in today's video. As usual, I reset for good DVs, and I name our Parasect Sexy with a CT instead of an X because I'm stupid and I find dumb things funny, and off we go. One of the first things that I try to do is save as much time as possible, and I take on the optional rival fight to the west of Viridian, and it goes very poor. I'm only level 5, and my damage just feels beyond weak. I promptly get put into my place, and it's very clear that Parasect isn't going to be able to get through this just yet with two Pokemon that outlevel me, so I have to move on for now. If you remember Paris' run, it had a very poor bright time and I really struggled with the times 4 weakness to poison very early in the run, but thankfully Parasect is much improved because it starts the game with leech life as opposed to Paris not even getting it until after Brock. This means that the bug catchers are no issue and we can get some much needed easy levels without having to grind wild Pokemon. We have one mission with Parasect today if it has any chance of not being a complete dumpster tier Pokemon and that is getting through Brock as efficient and as fast as humanly possible and that's going to be a a challenge to say the least. Eventually I'm able to backtrack to the optional rival fight and take it out after a couple of attempts. It's not too bad since despite him having a fire and flying type Pokemon, they don't pack any double super effective moves this early in the game. I finished this one at level 10 and there's only one optional trainer left. Paris handled the junior trainer with the high damage Pokemon very well and it's no different for Parasect. It has pretty good defense and with Leech Life to recover health if we need it, it's not an issue at all and this brings us up to level 11. And I I don't want to grind wild Pokemon because it's pivotal to the run to not get bogged down here and I give Brock some tries despite not feeling too confident about it. It's not great, but I can keep pace with the Geodude alright, but that's not going to be good enough. Leech Life could recover some health, but with only 15 uses between two Pokemon, I need to use Scratch at least a little bit and it's really weak. I try a few times on this fight, but it just doesn't get any better. This means I'll have to grind, but I only do a very small amount to get me to level 12 and see if that slot boost will help me out with the problematic section of the run. I return to Brock for another shot and the strategy that I don't immediately recognize here is that you should be using Leech Life here early and often since Geodude can increase its defense and Onyx can't. Using the not resisted move will serve you better on the Geodude. I take a ton of damage but with Leech Life I'm able to sustain myself a little bit and I hang on with 16 health going into the Onyx. The strategy here is just the same as it is with Paris or really any Pokemon with a status move. You need to get rid of those 5 full heals that Brock has 
pass for no reason at all and just get one to stick to ensure that you outspeed and gives you the chance to have it skip its turn with full paralysis. After that we have a tiny bit of leech life pp left for a tiny bit of sustain and damage that isn't resisted and a ton of scratches for its non bide turns and plenty of stun spores left to nullify the bides. When it's all said and done I do get a little lucky avoiding a ton of tackles and with leech life I actually finished the fight with one more health than what I started with and I level up. And this was my first attempt at level 12 and only my third overall attempt and this went much better than I thought and potentially it's a good omen for the run. I save after buying and healing at 34 minutes of in-game time which is roughly three times faster than Paris which makes sense we had access to leech life and all that. I'm keeping it to a minimum in Mount Moon but I do battle the Raticate Grunt since it's good experience. I may have been seven levels lower getting through Brock but trainers give much more experience and takes significantly less time than Metapod grinding so catching up doesn't really take that long it's not a big deal. This means that by the time I'm done doing the mandatory trainers to this section plus the optional one I'm level 17 and I'm not that far behind at all considering that I think level 18 is that magic number that you want to do well on rival number two with. So once in Cerulean I do make a dumb mistake. I'm insistent on taking rival number two immediately rather than Misty and that would be a great matchup and I get curb stomped a whopping seven times before I'm finally successful. Most of them either had lots of sand attacks or ended with a big ember or a combination of both but eventually my stubborn ass gets through it. You can take a ton of damage from the Pidgeotto and that's probably what you want because you can heal up a lot of it with leech life and ultimately you would prefer to have the Charmander go for scratch rather than ember and that's what happens here. It was a minor blunder to do this now and I guess all it really took was real life time and not in game time so it's not an issue. I'm still not sure why I did this one first after Paris was so successful on Misty. The preceding route isn't worth talking about and after Bill's house I finally head towards the gym and once again a special shout out to this golden trainer inside of Misty's gym that shows just how weak we are to flying moves like heck. Fantastic. As for Misty, Parasect has a great matchup. I resist water, I'll only be taking tackles, and I can heal up any damage that I receive with Leech Life. Starmie is also weak to Leech Life, which just makes it that much easier. This is a very easy and fast fight, and just like that, we're moving on. I pick up Dig before leaving Cerulean, and from there, it's time for the SSN to get another piece of our final moveset and Body Slam. I also battle the Gentleman to get the extra rare candy, but unlike Paris, we are behind on level since I'm going for speed, and we don't have Spore just yet. I have dig for super effective damage but I did have to reset once because Ponyta is just really fast and fire really hurts with our double weakness. Now it's time for rival number three and even without spore it's not bad. I paralyze the Pidgeotto, I avoid any sand attacks and body slam can just wreck anyone on his team. The only part that got potentially worrying was the Kadabra disables my leech life which means that I'm just missing health going into the Charmeleon but thankfully I can survive an ember and body slam is just powerful enough to one shot it and we get through on our first attempt. Now let's skip ahead to Lieutenant Surge. I resist electric attacks and I have access to Dig which means that this one is very simple and very quick. I even take a critical hit from the Raichu and it does a very small amount of damage just to prove the point point. and that's another batch down for our cute little zombie. Rock Tunnel is uneventful so let's pick it right back up and Celadon. I pick up Fly and I get the fresh water and now it's time for the gym. I have a great matchup here as well so I make the call to tackle it first. Victory Bell will always go for Poison Powder since it's super effective effective and after a wrap I do take it out with some counter super effective leech lives. The important part is that I hit level 30 and now we have access to Spore and that's what I wanted to see. The rest of the fight is trivial and I blast through it on our way to another easy badge. Afterwards it's time for the rocket hideout. I'm still on the minimum track so I make my way directly to the first Giovanni encounter. With Dig the first two Pokemon are just trivialized. Onyx and Rhyhorn are both weak to it and I blow past them fast and I learn my lesson from the Paris run and I immediately utilize Spore to put the Kangaskhan to sleep to avoid any risk and I eventually take it down as well without too much hassle. I get the Sylph Scope and I head over to Lavender for rival number 4 and this fight is normally easy but I've reached a pretty big power spike recently and it's on full display. Anything that's even remotely threatening is just going to get put to sleep and between Body Slam and Dig I have enough damage to easily get through this fight. Once again the Kadabra does get off a Disable on the Spore and it makes my life slightly more difficult but luckily Ember isn't that strong of a move and I can survive one before a Dig puts the Charmeleon in its place. Afterwards I finish up the tower, I grab the Pokey Flute and this means we can pick right back up in Fuchsia. I go ahead and pick up the final two HMs of the run 
one in the safari zone first and then I make a slight detour over to Sylph Cove because I'm worried about the poison type gem. I clear the path towards rival number five and I pick up the very precious swords dance TM to add to our move pool very soon. Now it's time to go back to Fuchsia and the jugglers aren't bad in the gym due to having leech life. It's a weak move for sure but it really can just slice through these psychic types that give a lot of runs trouble. I only do the two mandatory ones and have I ever mentioned this juggler? He says, I dropped my balls at the end of this fight and even as like a fifth grader I remember thinking what the fuck are you talking about dude? And this is the second video in a row where I was overly worried about Koga. I have dig and spore so I should know better. I don't even have to utilize swords dance although I probably should have just to make it a little faster but it was still pretty quick. I do get the opportunity to learn slash and I love slash as a move but remember that crits ignore stat changes and with swords dance that's not really what we want. Anyways that's another badge down and it's going pretty smooth to this point. Now it's time to revisit Silphco and I've already cleared the way so that means it's time for rival number five. Paris dominated this fight so how will his evolution fare? And I failed my first attempt because of a turn one wing attack crit but on the second attempt I'm just testing the waters here. I haven't manipulated experience this entire run and I need to know where I level up. This fight isn't great without the attack boost but I do manage to weave my way through it and then I decided to set up a little bit on the Gyarados and it turns out that I level up going into the Alakazam and that's not what you want. I'm only 10 health going into the Charizard and we know how that's gonna go. After five more attempts I get a decent one. I weave through the fight naturally and when I level up on the Alakazam I get taken down to 33 health but I get the chance to put it to sleep and I set up. It's gonna be battle over if I can just outspeed the Charizard but unfortunately at level 40 with three batch boosts to speed it's not enough and I've hit my first hard wall of the run. I retreat to get a little bit of experience from the trainers on the way to the beds and I come back when I'm level 40 and the idea here is that now I can just set up before the Alakazam and save a lot of health and maybe be healthy enough for the Charizard but the really unfortunate thing is that I level up to 41 right after the Alakazam which means I lose all of my stats during the worst possible moment and this just isn't going to cut it either. I have to once again take precious time to get more levels and you could argue that I could use a candy here and maybe you're right but at this point I don't even know when I'll outspeed the Charizard. I get to the point where I'll level to 42 after Pidgeot so I can set up on the slow execute and I'll give it another try and would you believe that it's still not enough to outspeed and I once again get shut down? I give this one about five more attempts to see if there's any other possibility that could occur but guys this is the moment in the run that Parasect's chances of being elite has really come to a screeching halt I'm sad to say it. I'm still doing my best to salvage the best possible time but the reality is that I need more levels which means more grinding on the grunts inside of Silphco. I keep going until I hit level 43 and let's see how that goes. And I return once again for another attempt. I'll briefly explain the strategy once again. On the Pidgeot you have to take a double super effective wing attack no matter what. There's no getting out of it. It hurts but Spore is strong enough to put it to sleep and that'll allow you to safely take it out. The execute is slow so that's your moment to Spore and set up some Swords Dance to get your attack to monstrous levels and get some extra speed. And Gyarados was never an issue here. Let's take a look at Alakazam. I don't outspeed it and it's not looking good. A failed disable into a body slam does take me on to the problematic Charizard but miraculously level 43 is the magic level where I outspeed but can I just say how lucky it is that body slam is a one shot here? I should have spored but I just lost so much and this fight took so long that I was just clicking A but finally I got past this very difficult fight after what felt like ages but it'll probably just be a few minutes to you guys because of the power of video editing. And just to be thorough let's cover Giovanni number two the world's most anticlimactic main fight to ever exist. I set up on the mid arena and I just run a train over all his Pokemon. It's not even close but I can't risk the possibility of somebody commenting why I didn't show Giovanni number two if I were just to edit it out so let's move on. The next badge is Sabrina and I'm not even worried about setting up my experience. The idea is that the physically frail Pokemon will just fall to a single body slam once I set up and that's what happens. I do take a pretty hefty chunk of damage especially from the Alakazam but I do get it down on the first attempt and that's always positive and I'm going to need that positivity as I swim towards Cinnabar for the dreaded fire type gym with our double weakness. I do have to battle a trainer or two to set up some experience but after some Doomstoner brother it's time to put Paris deck to another big test. On the first attempt with Blaine I set up on the Growlithe and things are going according to plan until the Rapidash comes in. It's a very speedy little horse and fire spin is a very broken move similar to Rap and it's doing quadruple the damage and that's not great and that's our first reset. I try a couple times to no avail. I have to retreat and tackle the other trainers in the gym to level up but remember guys this is very dangerous for 
sec because there's lots of traps like this other Rapidash that ha also has fire spin as well and this just leads to a lot of frustration. Eventually I get to level 48 and I get the chance to learn growth. I replace Swords Dance, I make a backup save just in case this doesn't work out, but the idea is that while I'm losing massive attack, I get double the turns to increase my speed. It's rather ingenious and I hope it works, but I honestly can't believe I didn't think of this for the Paris run. I think I probably could have saved well over an hour if I would have thought of it then. So with our new strategy at level 48, I return to Blaine, I keep Growlithe in a never ending nap, I do the full setup of growth and after a body slam, I see how it goes. And this is just what the doctor ordered. I easily outspeed all of the remaining Pokemon and I cruise through them with a single hit to get the 7th badge. The thought of replacing Swords Dance never even occurred to me, but I do learn something new all the time when I do these runs. Now it's time for the last gym and I don't even bother to set up since I know I'll level up eventually since I didn't bother doctoring my experience. With Spore it's no issue and eventually I do level up towards the end on the Nidoking. King and from there I do set up just to ensure the first try victory although it was probably unnecessary but that ultimately leads us to a win and the final badge of the run. Now we are down to the last six trainers of the game. Now it's time for rival number six and after a really tough rival number five fight and the fact that this fight took Paris a very long time to complete I'm a little bit worried. Pidgeot is first and I just have the strategy perfected here we've heard this a lot of times but you have to take a very painful wing attack every single time it's gonna hurt and then you can just put it to sleep and you can just body slam it down. Rhyhorn is up next and I'm not setting up here once again. I put it to sleep and I take it out relatively easy. The fun starts when I level up after the fight and now I get to test out growth and see if it's the real deal and superior to Swords Dance. On the slow execute, it's time to get to work. I put it to sleep. I go for some growth. I fail to knock it out once I'm fully set up, but that's due to a critical hit. Next is the Gyarados and once again I do fail to one hit it and normally you would think that this would be problematic because I'm losing a ton of damage by replacing Swords Dance, but outspeeding with Spore is the key to this entire run. I can make up that damage since they'll just be asleep anyway, so this is what we want. Now for the real test, and that's if I can outspeed the Alakazam, and the answer is a resounding yes. It worked, and that's fantastic because Alakazam's faster than Charizard. I take it out and we move on, and since I outspeed, I never have to worry about a flamethrower again, and I casually do a couple of body slams to seal this victory on the first try and color me impressed guys growth has really went above and beyond the extra speed is great from there it's time to share up our stats the best we can by spending our massive amounts of money on vitamins and after i get what i can it's time to prepare for the end of the run i speed through victory road as fast as i can but i do pick up the 11th rare candy of the run just to help out for that little boost before moving on to the indigo plateau and the last thing i can do is use eight of our 11 rare candies to beef up as much as we can and then it's time to see what Lorelai has to offer us at level 61. In comes the Dugong and at this level I can outspeed and that just means that Spore is going to be very oppressive. I then set up my full complement of growth to further all of my stats but Dugong wants to keep waking up and sorry buddy uh, Spore is not going to allow you to play the game today. Notice that a body slam doesn't one hit since I don't have Swords Dance but for this run I've already made the decision that speed is way more important and we move on after another body slam. Cloyster is next. It does have the highest defense in the entire game so one body slam isn't going to do it but with Spore that really doesn't matter. For some reason I get really daring and I actually don't put it to sleep but look at my time 6 growth special stat tank this Aurora Beam. It does absolutely nothing. And we know how Slowbro is going to go but let me take a second to talk about another aspect of Spore that I didn't consider. The extreme bulk that 6 stages of special buffs provides plus the badge boost make us disgustingly tanky and I didn't even consider that until that last cloister fight. Next to last is Jinx. It's really the only Pokemon on Lorelai's team that isn't that bulky, especially in the defense department, and no sleep is required as a body slam just does its job and it takes us to the end of the fight. Lapras is last, and I'd love to test out the bulk against a blizzard, but a crit would still decimate us, so I play it safe with a spore into some body slams and I take the fight. This one was easy, but let's not get too confident. And speaking of being extremely easy and being too confident, it's fine to be cocky against Bruno. This is always the equivalent of a varsity football team taking on Alabama and I refuse to elaborate on the details of the fight. I don't mess around, I take the time to set up on the first Onyx and after I'm growthed out of my mind, I go on a tear through his entire team just to remind Bruno what I think about him. Agatha is next and this fight can always go sideways depending on what the AI wants to do. On the opening Gengar, Agatha gives me a nice little present by wasting her turn on a Dream Eater and that means it's Spore into Grow 
growths to get some of that precious speed. I do set up some, but when I get to about the fifth growth, Agatha makes an aggressive swap to the Golbat, and there's no doubt in my mind that the AI desperately wants to go for Haze to eliminate all of my boost, and I cannot let that happen. Luckily, at this point I do outspeed. I finish my setup before body slamming it to the Shadow Realm where this ugly creature belongs. The Gengar then comes back in, and at this point, I'm unstoppable. Dig can just go on an absolute tear here, and it easily one-shots the Gengar. And this means that I'm going to outspeed the Haunter as well, with no issues at all. And the Arbot's gonna come in, and it's just forever gonna be the weak link, and it just feels like filler for her team. I mean, seriously, who uses Arbok outside of Team Rocket? Finally, the only question we have left is if we outspeed the last Gengar, and we do, since this new growth strategy is beyond strong, and that takes the fight. Parasect is just on a roll here, guys. Now it's time for everyone's favorite dragon trainer Lance, and by favorite I mean he's the only person who even uses dragons. I use a rare candy to reset my experience, and let's keep this going. I don't outspeed Gyarados initially, but it only goes for a dragon rage, which means I have full reign to do what I want from this point, and Spore is always on my mind. I set up the gross to get my speed boosted, but I've mentioned it before, but notice the difference between Swords Dance. I'm not one hitting everything, but I can't stress enough how much more pivotal 3 extra badge boosts to speed is in these final fights. From there, I'm really boosted, I'm fast, and the next two Dragonairs are not a problem. I play it safe and I put the first one to sleep before I use Dig, but after seeing it one hit, I opt to not use Spore on the second one, and that takes us straight to the Aerodactyl. And if you really want to know how much extra speed growth gives, I can actually outspeed the Aerodactyl. This Pokemon is extremely fast, and usually can still go first even with the boost on many of my runs, but 6 boost is really overpowered, and I do some resisted body slams to finally move on. Dragonite is all that's left, and since I outspeed pretty much everything else, it goes without saying what's going to happen here. I massage it a little bit with some body slams while it takes a nice little nap, and then I politely ask it to leave me alone as I finish this battle once again in dominating fashion, and all that's left is the champion. Unlike Paris, I had a great battle against rival number 6, but are things going to change in this fight? Let's find out. I use my last rare candy to reset my experience, and then I dive straight in. Pidgeot is first, and I feel like I've said this about 56 times by this point, but we are going to take a wing attack most of the time, and it's not going to feel good, but after that, Spore into some gross means that I outspeed and take control of the spot. Body Slam crits, it takes the Pidgeot down to just a sliver of health, and it gets a full restore here, and I make a huge mistake. I forget that full restore removes the sleep status, so I don't use Spore again because I'm not paying attention. A body slam doesn't take it out in one hit, and it uses mirror move for its own stabbed body slam that's obviously going to crit me, and I'm stunned by this chain of events. I'm at 32 HP, and all I can really do here is just clean this up and see what happens from there. Alakazam is dangerous, but with growth, I am faster, and body slam knocks it out to give me some hope for this battle. Rhydon's next, it's slow, it's useless, a single dig can demolish it with minimal effort at this point. Executor always has the potential to be very annoying, so never risk anything with it. Sleep into body slams is all that's needed, but I would hate to mess around, get put to sleep, and then stomp to death because I just wanted to be risky. Gyarados is the penultimate Pokemon, and I'm a broken record at this point. It's getting a Spore, because everyone loves Spore, and then I body slam it down, but then tragedy strikes, guys. I level up to 66 right after this fight, and this means that I'm not gonna outspeed the Charizard, and this thing is just Parasect's boogeyman. At a mere 35 health, I get what can only be described as one of the luckiest things that could ever happen as it goes for a way less accurate fire blast, I guess just to style on me, and it misses. This means despite losing all of my badge boost, I can still get off the spore, I can take the fight, and I can ultimately finish off the run. And Parasect's done it. What a lucky finish after that very unfortunate Pidgeot start, but I'll take it. And before I dive into some closing thoughts on Parasect, let's take a look at those sweet statistics and see how this one stacks up overall. Our zombie bug finishes with a level of 66, but what's most important is its time, and its final in-game time sits at 3 hours and 58 minutes, which obviously isn't that great. It's behind my very early Snorlax run where I wasn't as optimal as I could have been by a decent margin and level, and it's even fairly significantly behind Lapras, and those were very far behind the top handful of Pokemon as well. I decided to do a new cutoff for these how fast runs, and that's going to be 4 hours, which more than likely means that only Ghastly will make the list as a pre-evolved Pokemon, but I'm fine with that. There's no need to bloat the list for no reason. I think Parasect is a fine Pokemon. I don't really think I could have done anything better. I had a pretty fantastic Brock time of about 30 minutes, which is probably the best you could hope for. And then I cruised through the game at minimum battles all the way up to 
to rival number 5 and that's where I hit the wall. Maybe using candies could have helped there, but there's no way it would significantly have lowered the final time in my opinion. What it all comes down to is that Parasect just isn't very good and doesn't really deserve much mentioning in the game's upper echelon outside of one thing and that thing is Spore. Spore is such a fun move to use and I had fun on the run. In these last two videos it single handedly carried bad Pokemon to respectable times, but the only real bit of information I got out of this run was that on the Paris run I could have saved almost an hour of in game time by utilizing the 6 badge boost of growth over Sword Dance's 3. And that probably would have moved it up on the list anywhere from 1 to 3 places, but it's too late. I'm not doing another Paris run, but just know that it could have been more optimal with growth and maybe wiggled its way to a sub 6 hour time, maybe even a 5 hour 30 minute time, but I'm not worried about it. And I know this was probably an unexpected video, but I enjoyed the last video so here we are wrapping this one up and what's next I'm really not sure I need to pull the trigger on Mewtwo eventually and I'd like to cover a few types that aren't represented in my pre-evolve runs yet and if you're curious there are five left electric flying and fighting are three of them and they're very small choices to pick from and then there's dragon and that actually only has a single choice and to my surprise there's actually no pre-evolved ice Pokemon so that's not an option unfortunately and if you're googling right now to fact check me yes both both Seal and Shelter are pure water types that don't get the ice typing until they evolve. But that's going to do it for me guys. If you are still around during the post roll, I appreciate you guys the most and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!